So once again, we're focusing in on those products that are gonna make our electricians' lives easier. Here, we're looking at the Wago 221 connector block. Gaz, what's significant about this connector block? Well, it allows us to put two conductors in that will join them together. Yep. Maintenance-free connector. Fantastic, okay. And what if I've got more than two wires that I need to connect together? So we can step it up to threes and fives, etc. So we're gonna be using the two-way one because Fantastic. we're gonna be joining together a set of neutrals and a set of circuit protective conductors as if we've simulated feeding a light switch. Very common now, yep. isn't it? As we've Absolutely. got a lot of LED downlighters, et cetera. Yep. And then we're gonna compare it against maybe the traditional connector block mm -hmm. and then look and see what the pros and cons between yep. using a very fast maintenance-free connector yep. and whether it holds true that it will be consistently better as we perhaps move towards a testing process. Well, this is the thing, isn't it? Because we all wanna be nice and quick on the installation process. We wanna get that done as quick as we possibly can. But if the speed of that is then counteracted at some point yeah. by something else, then we might end up actually costing ourselves more time or you know more expense when we don't want to. So we're going to consider these quite carefully. I, I love this product. I think it's a fantastic product. I do as well. Been around for a long time. Uh, solid and stranded cables? Yes. And flexible cables? Yes. Can make all of those off into here. So that's another good bonus, yeah? So we'll bring the camera in, we'll connect them up, and we'll have a chat about these. So Joe, we brought the camera in nice and close and I can see you've got two slightly different looking styles of Wago connector block there, one that's a, a two-way and a three-way. Can you just explain the subtle differences between the two? Yeah, it's mainly in sizing. Uh, so it's in sizing and it's also in terms of current carrying capacity as well. You can see we've got the slightly smaller block on top there. That's designed to take uh, conductors of a slightly smaller size and will carry up to 20 amps through there. And the bottom one is the larger size which will carry up to 30 amps. So Joe, this is the slightly larger two conductor connector from Wago, and there's some really important information written on the side of it. Can you explain that information to us? Absolutely, yeah, like you say, it is the larger of the two connectors, and that becomes really, really important because it defines the largest size of conductor that we can connect into here. So if you look here, you can see that it tells us the range of conductor sizes that we can connect. It can go from 0.5 millimeter squared all the way up to six millimeters squared. So that's the largest conductor that we could connect into here, six mil. There's also some information about the AWG size at the top here, should you need it. And then down at the bottom, some more critical information, the highest voltage we can use this on, and also the most amount of current that we can run through here safely, which is 41 amps. So we wouldn't wanna be running more than 41 amps through one of these connector blocks. When we turn the connector round, we can see on the other side there's some more useful information and uh, this relates to how long the conductor is going into the connector. So here we don't want to go beyond 13 millimeters long, that's the maximum length that we're putting in there. There's a handy guide on the side that shows you how long that is so you could uh, put your conductor against it, strip that amount off and then install it. Of course really experienced electricians will be able to eyeball that measurement and get that near enough uh, to be safe. So some really useful information on the side of our connector there. Let's have a look at the slightly smaller size. So we swapped over now to the slightly smaller three conductor connector from Wago. Yeah. Has it got a similar information on it? It does, again, very helpfully. On this side, we can see the, the maximum conductor sizes that we can put in. So we're going from 0.2 millimeters squared all the way up to four millimeters squared. And then down at the bottom, it tells us that this can handle a maximum of 32 amps of current. So we wouldn't want to connect this uh, to a load larger than that. And then again, when we spin it round, we can see that the maximum conductor length is ever so slightly different. We can see that that, that is 11 millimeters max. So again, you've got that handy guide there should you need it. And that's the most amount of conductor that we'd want to strip to install into our Wago connector block. Remembering those conductors could be solid stranded or fine stranded going into that connector absolutely. Is that right, Joe? yeah absolutely and of course with the lever uh, kind of connection that we've got going on here you just plug your conductors in which we'll show you in a moment snap it closed so joe we're going to be using the two conductor connectors in order to join together our neutrals and our circuit protective conductors at this switch the reason being we've mimicked as if we've taken the supply to the switch and are returning switching line neutral and cpc out to say a number of down lighters we can see the box and the switch are fully insulated, so the CPC isn't required, but could be required in the future if it was changed for an exposed conductive part. Over here, however, we've used a more traditional route, exactly the same setup with the supply coming down. Any issues, Joe, with those connector blocks? 
The only issue with connector blocks, we've been using these for decades and really quite successfully. There's not been an awful lot of problems associated with them. However, there is a risk. And that risk is that the tightness of the connection is entirely down to the feel of the electrician. A skilled and experienced electrician will know how tightly to do that up so that we're not over tightening it, getting it to the point where we're damaging either the head of the screw or the thread on there, or even worse, the actual conductor itself. But if we've got a less skillful electrician, that could happen. And also what would be even worse would be is if we were to get a loose connection going on here, if perhaps the electrician didn't do it up quite tightly enough. Now the benefit of the Wago connector block in regard to that, Gary, is what? We know they're very fast and we'll prove that again in a moment. We've stripped the conductors to required length. We open up the lever on both sides and drop it in, bang. We know they're quick. Brilliant. By closing the lever, we've got the required pressure set mm. by manufacturer, and that's what makes them wonderful as well. Yeah. So we drop those two in, fantastic. So we, we know how quick they are, we've got the required pressure, but is there gonna be any issues when I start trying to prove that this CPC is present at the switch as a testing process? Because we're obviously, in the future, could turn this for an exposed conductive part, and the electrician's gonna to have to prove the CPC made the switch. So over here, Joe, is it going to be easy for me to prove a CPC is present? Absolutely. When you look at this connector block, you can see that you've got loads of options there for connecting a probe to it. We've got a couple of screw heads we could access. We could even poke it in the end there and get a pretty good connection going on. However, with the Wago connector, the thing that I'm quite interested just to have a look at is, do we have that same ease of connection? Is it very easy for us to get the probe of a test instrument into that connector block and get a read and get a connection? to see if our CPC is continuous to this point. I think we ought to get a tester out and have a go at obviously proving continuity at both of these switches. Mm. Let's do that next. So Joe, we're at the very crucial stage now where the electrician's gonna have to prove that the circuit protective conductor gets to every point in circuit, and in this case, down to the switch. We're gonna start off by proving it at the actual five amp connector blocked switch. So can we do that for me first, please? Yep, so we've got our meter all set up and ready to go. I'm going to put one probe onto the common terminal there. And I'm in the very fortunate position of having three hands, which makes me a really useful electrician. We're then going to probe into the screw there of that connector block. Now we can see from the reading on the meter that we've got 0.12 of an ohm. So it was very, very easy uh, to get onto that connector block there. That was really simple. However, are we going to have the same simplicity in getting onto the Wago connector? Because when I look at this, if I look in there, I don't really want to be shoving my probes down into there. I'm not sure I'm going to get a connection in the end of it. So what's the solution, guys? Hopefully, as a manufacturer, they've left us a, an entry point in there, Joe. So if you have a look around in there, I think they're going to be labelled something with a test point for us. It wouldn't by any chance be this hole in the back here marked test, would it? That would be my first port of call, I think. <laughs> okay, so let's have a look. Actually, uh, Wago have done a fantastic job of this because they've actually given me two testing points. There's one just underneath the lever here, uh, but looking at that, I think I'd need a longer, more slender probe to get in there. So what they've done as well is on the back here, there is a little hole through here marked test. And let's see if I can get onto that. So I'm gonna test onto uh, there, and then I'm just gonna plug my other probe into here. So we'll just get this connected up. And there it goes. And we're getting 0.16 of an ohm there. So again, that's really nice and simple. There is a hole there, it's not so big that it's gonna cause any kind of significant harm. However, it is the right size for me to be able to get my probe of my tester in there. I think that's a great little design feature, a very well thought out product. So Joe, that was really interesting. Yeah. We got to see, as always, how quick these Wago connectors are to connect. Yep. And then we looked for maybe yep. a small defect in the fact that maybe could we probe in to test? And yeah. was that an easy thing to do? It really was. I was really hoping that that wouldn't be a problem. Yep. I, was, I was a bit worried because I'm thinking all of this kind of goodness, all of the good side of this, all of the benefits of this could be lost or, or slightly kind of restricted if that was an issue. And the testing part wasn't an issue at all. It was very simple, just plugged the probe through the, the, the pre-designed test hole and I got the connection as easily as you like. So yeah, really, really happy with that. Also, one connector does a vast range of amp ratings yep. where we know the traditional connector block, you have to select a five, a yep. 15 and a 30 amp connector block. Yep. So if we're going to say maybe a small negative towards it, yep. would you suggest it might be the price? 
that is the only issue. Uh, we've not got exact prices because it fluctuates all yeah. over the place depending where you buy it. But it's it's we're looking at possibly three times the price per connector. Yeah. So you know if you look at one connection from there and then one of these blocks, they are more expensive in in the com comparable uh, current range that we've okay. been looking at. So yeah, th but for me, the speed, all all the advantages. And everything just just really outweighs that that small cost issue. I, I don't see that as being a, a massive factor. It's the pressure from the lever yeah, that yeah. I really like. It's that yeah. click yeah. and done. Yeah, I agree with that. As, as an electrician with with slight OCD, which I'm sure many electricians will share with me, the amount of times you've sort of gone back to it. Yeah, it's tight. Yeah, is it tight? Yeah, it's tight. Is it tight? Yeah, it's tight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't need to worry about that with that. That's a fantastic bonus. So in conclusion, we yeah. absolutely like. The yeah. 221 yep. Wago Connector we Block. We absolutely do. Um, and we'd encourage you just to nip over and have a look at our race that we had uh, with these against each other. We had uh, conductors uh, connected via a conventional connector block and a Wago. And uh, you can see the results of that race when me and Gary went head to head. Yeah, yeah, when we went to head to head. Which one did I get, just to remind me which one I had? Do you know what? I don't want to spoil it. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. so go and watch the video and you'll see, you'll see who, uh, who came out on top there.